Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. I want to open your eyes so that you understand the the irregularity, the criminality that was hidden behind the Bible. I don't have time. It's gradually, gradually. This is my office day. I'm in the office. So, man of God comes to you and preaches to you that praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit heaven. And it will be difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Because that it will be easy for a camel to pass through the needle. Now, when you when you when you evaluate all these things, when you look at all these things, in that church where the man of God is preaching, the rich does not sit at the back chairs. Even if the church starts at 7 a.m., 7 a.m. in the morning. And the rich comes at 3 p.m. The rich will never sit behind. No matter how powerful that church is. You don't see our leaders, our political criminals. When they go to churches, churches like redeemed Christian churches. Churches that we thought that, oh, this is where Jesus stays. <laughs> they go to choosing. Deeper life. Once they arrive, no matter how late they arrive, they are going to the front seat. And Usher will carry them and carry their whatever they came with and take them to the front. This is here on earth. If the rich are occupying front seat in church here on earth, what makes you believe that they will occupy hellfire when they die? No matter how bad a person is, so long as he has brought money to church, a front row seat is waiting for him. So tell me, if they are occupying the front row seat here on earth because they are rich, what will make them to enter? What will, make, what will stop them from entering heaven? So all these things, these we are written for the slaves, telling you to say, don't worry. Jesus is coming very soon. In fact, I know so many people in my church that gave their life to Jesus, gave everything they had to their pastor because they were waiting for Jesus to come. The pastor said, just all these things, forget it. In fact, throw them away. Jesus is coming. He's just here. On, he's just nearer. He's, hey, prepare yourself for heaven. They carry everything they had. They gave to the pastor. The pastor has used whatever he was giving to build schools here on earth, not in heaven. The pastor has built hotels here on earth, not in heaven. The pastor has built universities here on earth, not in heaven. I don't know about other African countries. The best universities in Nigeria today are owned by churches. They are not preparing to go to heaven. They are preparing to be here on earth. Their children will come and inherit wealth. Your children will come and inherit poverty because you refuse to work. You refuse to be successful. You refuse to be rich. You wanted to go to heaven. Today, Jesus has not come. You are poor. And you are going to die poor. Your children will come and inherit your poverty and go back to the same church that rendered their father poor and they continue worshipping the children of the same pastor that rendered their father poor because he didn't show them the way to prosperity. Jesus is coming very soon. We agree. But before Jesus comes, 
who are you on earth? What have you achieved on earth? The history that you are reading, the Bible that you are reading, and you want to do more than the people that wrote it. Those that wrote it don't want to go to heaven anytime soon. They want to be here. They want to be here with us. In fact, they want to dwell here. They don't believe in going to heaven. But to you that don't know your history, you don't know your history. To you, everything Africa. Look at what is happening in our churches today. Look at what is happening in African churches today. Every day we are fighting against our ancestral parents. We are fighting against the spirit of our departed ones. We are sending Holy Ghost fire to them. We are sending the blood of Jesus to them. We are sending, uh, uh, we are detaching ourselves from them every blessed day. Then you, you, you ask yourself, as I conclude, you ask yourself, how about the Westerners? The Israelites, the ones that committed greater sin than our parents, if our parents did commit sins. Remember, our parents did not support homosexual. But the people that wrote the Bible today have brought homo homosexual to us. They say, this is now the right way to go. Our forefathers did not do that. Imagine if it was our forefathers. Our ancestors are being accused. Our ancestors are being humiliated by ignorant men and women of God who call themselves men and women of God. Those that don't know history. For you to be a great for you to be a great man or a woman of God, you must first of all know your history. If you don't know your history, you cannot tell me about my history. You must know your history first. You must read the history before you start sending Holy Ghost fire to your parents that loved you that died. Your forefathers, your, your mothers that loved you that died. They came here, took our parents, raped our parents, killed our parents, made them slaves, and come back a few years later and told us that our parents are the evil ones. They are the right ones. And you believe it because you are mad. Because you don't have history. Because your brain is gone. You don't use your brain to reason. There is no brain on your brain. What is there is sand, soil. May God have mercy on you. When you read your Bible, when you read your Bible, I don't I don't stop you from reading the Bible, but read the Bible, Konya Munuche. If you read the Bible, you read the Bible, you read the As you are reading it, you read the Bible, you read the Bible, you read the Bible, you read the Bible, you cannot tell me that blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the heaven. When you yourself that is preaching it is not poor. <laughs> I myself, I refuse to be poor. When, when I was being called to do this work of God, I look at the people that are doing the work. I look at their shoe, look at their houses. I say, mm, 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 I can't do this thing. <laughs> this is not my calling. <laughs> poverty. Me and poverty, we can never use one road. <laughs> the person that is telling you, blessed are the poor, are not poor. Oh, blessed are not again. It's blessed not hungering the person. Money is the root of all evil. You believe. But the pastor that is preaching that into you, immediately he finished. He said, offering time, blessing time. What are you giving him? Is he not money? Is he not the root of all evil? Someone say, no, not money. They say, the, the, the love of money. Are you mad? Who doesn't love money? Who doesn't love money? Mention that person. Mention the person. Even God himself loves money. Who doesn't love money? Just mention one person that don't love money. Say, this one don't love money. Everyone loves money. And because money is very, very important, you must have it. Money is a defense. If you don't have it, you are nothing. You are going nowhere. No one is going to respect you. And that's why you need to look for it. You need to look for it. You need to have it. It's a must-have. Because the people that are telling are criticizing money, the people that are speaking against money, they want money. 
When pastor finished preaching, he said, offering time, blessing time. You give him money. The people that wrote the Bible said the money is the root of all evil. When you collect the Bible from them, you give them money. That same root of all evil. There are people that have useless their life today. Go to churches, you will see them. They are praying. Today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. A working day. That's why when I become the governor, or one of my sons or daughter become a governor in this state, if I catch you doing church service on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, that church will be closed. There is time for everything. Sunday is enough for you to go to church and pray because God himself, God when he was creating heaven and earth, he worked on Monday, he worked Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He worked. One, he rested for one day and he said, this day that I've rested, keep it holy. But you, you see people who are doing 30 days, 31 days of glory, 31 days of fasting and prayer. Ignorance. You discover that the more we pray, the more we, we are ignorant, the more we are poor. Look at a whole Nigeria. Look at Africa. No African nation can be able to sponsor their budget, their national budget without borrowing money from China, without borrowing money from IMF. But we are praying. The more we pray, the more we are poor. Nigeria, we like to overdo things. We see a white man praying. We come back to Nigeria. White man has just prayed for one hour. Nigeria, we pray for 24 hours. <laughs> when you finish praying, you wake up. Hunger will kill you. Go to churches of those that pray too much and see how hunger is destroying them. Because Monday, they are in church. Tuesday, they are in church. Wednesday, they are in church. That place is full of poverty. Because people don't have opportunity to go and work to make money. So where are we going? The richest man in Africa today is not a Christian. It's a Muslim. The richest people on earth today don't even have time to pray. I'm not discouraging prayer. Pray. There is time for everything. When it is time to pray, you pray. Don't overdo everything. Don't overdo everything. Lastly, I, I was at uh, everyday supermarket. I was buying something. Then there is this uh, man in front of me. He was trying to pay for what he bought. Unfortunately, he, he, he didn't have enough money. And I was behind him. Then, then I asked, ah, brother, how are you? <laughs> he said to me, I'm well. <laughs> I'm rich. The pastor taught them that any make everything that you say prophetic. Even when you don't have, say you have. So I have money that I wanted to use to pay for him. But because he told me that I'm rich, I'm well, I left him. <laughs> he didn't have money to pay. This is where Christianity has damaged the brains of most Nigerians. Most Nigerians are zombie. Sometimes when even I see them on the road, they are zombies. They are zombie. You know, I, I look at them, I see them as zombie because their brain is finished. Something that you have seen with your physical eye like this. Bible and what your pastor told you will make you to look at blue and say it's black. I looked at him. He doesn't have money to pay. I have money to give to him to complete. But he said, I'm rich, I'm well. I left him with his richness and his awareness. <laughs> and he couldn't pay. They returned back the things that he bought. Christianity has damaged people's mentality. Christianity has destroyed people's brain. Because we have abused it. We have abused it. It's just like democracy. Everything that comes to Africa. When you go to America and see how they conduct their democratic election, you will see that there is a difference between what they are doing and what we are doing here. As in Africa, we are not qualified to have democracy. We are supposed to still be ruled by the military because we are not yet qualified. I had even qualified. We are not yet qualified. How can we be in a democracy? One single man 
we make cement. One man, we make cement and say cement is going to be sold at 5,000 naira per bag. But if you go to Zambia, the same man is selling cement at 3,000 per bag. Everything that he uses to produce the cement is here. Here in Nigeria. Here in Africa. He doesn't import anything. But he says, this is democracy. One man decides what happens in cement industry. Is this democracy? We are not yet qualified to have democracy in Nigeria. I'm supposed to be ruling us. We are not even qualified to have democracy in Africa. We are supposed to be ruled by the army. Because everything that comes to us, we abuse it. Today we cannot even vote. Because the person we vote, is not the one that is going to rule. But it's democracy. We copied it from the white. Today we are overdoing it. <laughs> we are overdoing it. So if you see people that are practicing democracy... Africa also, we are practicing democracy. Everything that comes to us, we abuse. The white people that taught us how to pray, if you go to their church, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Oh, holy, wow. It's only in Africa where you come back, you come to church 7 a.m. in the morning and leave 7 p.m. On Monday, you come back. Tuesday, you come back. Wednesday, you come back. Thursday, you come back. Friday you come back. Sunday you come back again. Because we are not wise. I feel sorry for ourselves. Please, share the broadcast. Somebody say, please give me your account. Dear Pastor. Ugu Chikode. Say, Dear Pastor Siawan, please send me your account number. Let me send you something immediately for telling our gullible brothers and sisters the truth. Yeah, a true man of God. God bless you. Uh, Ugu Chikode. Paul, also, Christianity is a big scam. I refuse to be a believer, but a thinker. Once you start thinking, you are very, very close. So do you mean that China don't have Christians there? China have Christians there, but they have regulated Christians. They don't overdo things. Where there are few Christians there, just like when I visited China, I never saw anybody preaching on the street. But where I stay, I don't even sleep well. Once it's once it is 4 a.m., you will be hearing megaphone everywhere. They will preach from Monday to night. When you finish your business, you want to go and the rest, you want to go and sleep. They will disturb you with the word of God. Every day, word of God. Every day, word of God. Every day, preaching. <laughs> what is the result? The result is corruption. The result is making men of God rich and making yourself poor. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Savage. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondo. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.